at 88.3 Life FM, uh, 62 degrees right now and mostly cloudy. You know, selling records is a, uh, it's a tough thing. Getting the notice and uh, getting notice on a national basis is a tough thing. Uh, we deal with international, I mean, uh, independent artists, well, international ones as well. But independent artists, we play a few of those here at Life FM. One of them that you've been hearing for the past several months is a young man named William Cappen. And uh, William is in studio with me here this morning. Go ahead, you can pull that toward you. I surprised you. Did you need to hit go on that, or is that is it going? It's all good. Okay, good. Just uh, checking with you. William Cappen had the song called "Revolutionary Love," title track to the album. Uh, you share um, producer um, or mixer? What is it? The the title I would say the mixing engineer with Phil Wickham. Uh, David Laring mixed a large portion of of this record, as long as as well as Rich Rankin. Mm -hmm. So a couple guys did, but David mixed most of the songs, and um, actually uh, two of the tracks were also mixed by by Daryl Smith. Now, as an independent artist, uh, you do worship at church. Yeah, I'm a worship leader and, and very committed to the local church, the church that I'm at right now, uh, Caneo Church. I helped plant about two years ago, and it's been a really really fun journey working at different types of churches it's it's been really interesting working in a small church you really get to know everyone really well they become family and you're just kind of a part of each other's business in lots of fun ways mm -hmm. so it's it's been a great experience for the last two years it works out towards the positive yeah it's been beautiful now when we spoke on the phone here a few weeks ago one, one of the things we share in common is uh, you're an azusa pacific grad i am and uh, my stepdaughter emily Azusa Pacific grad, and I think you guys graduated right around the same time, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was maybe about a year yeah. different, something like that. But the school was big enough, your paths didn't cross. No. That's the way it goes. I know. It's like when I was in the Navy and people would say, <laughs> you know, my grandson's in the Navy, maybe you know him. <laughs> so, no. That didn't happen. Anyway, uh, you're in Bakersfield uh, setting up some meetings, uh, meeting with a few folks, and uh, today going to audition for the uh, Gospel Fest which comes up in um, October, mid-October, uh, sponsored by San Joaquin Community Hospital. Uh, a lot of folks are auditioning for that today, and I think they have all the appointments set on that. But let me give you the phone number, just in case, 869-6560. If you're a uh, solo artist or uh, uh, praise team, and uh, check it out and see if they have any openings left for auditions. Uh, but. Uh, one of the things, as we said, as an independent artist, it's trying to get noticed. What do you find uh, the biggest challenges that you have? You know, I think, I think for me the biggest challenge has been, um, it hasn't as much been getting, you know, getting meetings with people and things of that nature, but I think trying to get on, uh, on the radio as an independent artist has mm -hmm. been one of, one of the harder uh, journeys, I suppose, or facets of the journey. And... Um, so it's it's been amazing that you guys have believed in me as an independent artist and played you know a couple of my tracks here and it's been a real big blessing now one of the things that uh, one of the advantages we have is we are independent uh, we're totally local and so i get a chance yeah. to listen to some of the independent artists now, i got to admit that uh, unfortunately there's a lot of bad quality stuff that comes from indie artists because it costs a lot of money to put together a yeah, decent does. quality cd and uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of times you listen to something and it's just not quite what you're looking for to get on the radio. Uh, but yours had the, uh, the production values to it there, so mm. that helped. And you can sing. Uh, you, oh, thanks. You can carry a tune, <laughs> that helps. <laughs> and I like what you have to say, too, in the song, you know, that I really like Revolutionary Love. Thank you. It's just, uh, you know, when you stop to think about that, uh, the, the revolutionary love that God has for us through Christ. And yeah, it's huge. Share that. Uh, tell a little bit about the uh, song. Where, the, where you came up. Well, I think um, you know when when I was writing the song, I actually co-wrote the song with with Kendall Payne. She's another uh, Christian independent artist, and um, we were just talking about how you know growing up at the church, you're you know you're you're taught lots, obviously, about the love of Christ and and things of that nature. But as you as you grow a little bit older and you wrestle with things in life, um, you know, good things, hard things. You realize how um, how revelatory that love can be when you when you're able to fully embrace it for what it is, and how how it changes the depths of who you are. 
uh, from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So it's been, you know, it's it's been an amazing part of the journey, even just writing this song and and talking about it and being able to play it. And it's just it's it's interesting when when you really sit back and ponder how how that love really changes us if we allow it to. Now, praise and worship music in churches has become a uh, very popular thing. Uh, even mainline churches, uh, I go to First United Methodist and we have a uh, contemporary service where we do a lot of praise and worship music as well. You know, Chris Tomlin, one of the leaders out yeah. there in that, uh, Paul Balosh, uh, they've been doing that for a number of years. Um, what do you see as the difference between the praise and worship uh, that you're going to sing in church in the way of choruses versus a song that you'll hear uh, such as the Mercy Me we just heard there with... Uh, um, all of creation. Yeah, it's not so much a P and W song as it is. It's telling a story. Yeah. Uh, what What difference do you see in that? Well, I think I think oftentimes the the main difference between you know a CCM tune as opposed to as opposed to a worship tune often will be the simplicity of of the melody and um, just singability. So I think you know when I'm when I'm writing congregational worship tunes and then. When I'm writing just tunes that tell a story, uh, you want to try and approach it in a different manner. Um, you know, sometimes I'll write a song and I, I'm hoping to write a worship tune. It ends up being just a, a tune where I'm telling a story. But the reality of the matter is, I think when you're writing worship songs, you want to you want to make it easy for people to um, to understand what you're trying to say, and also make it easy enough so the majority of the congregation can sing along with you because that's. You know, especially in church, when it comes to worship, that's a big um, portion of how we worship congregationally is through singing. It's not the only way, but it's it's one of the ways that we do. And so, um, I think the easier it is for for the body to be able to sing together, the easier it is to to be able to worship in that in that environment. And, and so, kind of gives you that um, uh, being able to uh, relate to how God's relating to us. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the things I've discovered over the years, I've been able to memorize some scripture through mm. some of the songs as well. You know? Yeah. And that, uh, you'll hear a certain song and you go, well, that's right straight out of Psalm 127, <laughs> verse 12. You know, exactly. Uh, and it, it helps you remember those things. It's like the Oscar Mayer Wiener song. We all remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, so you want to get certain scripture songs, boom, you, you can learn scripture that way. Exactly. So no, it's so true. Kind of stuff you keep in mind. Anything new coming up uh, that you're looking forward to? You got a tour, or you? Know, well, up um, I've just been playing a couple different. Uh, I've played a couple different shows recently, which have been amazing. I'm looking to get out here and play in Bakersfield a little bit more. Hopefully, Gospel Fest here on the 17th, and. Um, and yeah, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to be touring a little bit this summer in Europe, which should be fun. Um, I'm leading worship at a conference out there in Germany, and then playing at some local churches and um, some local venues out there, which should be interesting. I've never played in Europe before, so it should be a should be a fun trip. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? <laughs> not at all. Okay. Not even ambition. <laughs> no, not one bit. Hey, you'll have to get you the uh, Rosetta Stone out there. I know. See, there you go. You can go. Fluent in German when you get there. It's, it's not going to happen. I can feel it. It's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> not going to make it. Well, William, we wish you all the best on this. And, thanks so uh, much. Thanks for stopping by this morning. And uh, I'll play Revolutionary Love coming up here in just a moment. Right here on 88.3 Life FM. William Kappen, independent artist. And uh, the song and album is called Revolutionary Love by William Kappen. K-A-P-P-E-N. And you can look him up on MySpace, right? MySpace, and you can find me at williamcappen.com. All right, so check it out. 